something about a train that's exciting. You remember how you felt the last time you saw a train or heard the sound of the train whistle? Well, I'll bet it made you wish you were on it, speeding over the rails, watching the scenery flash by. Almost anywhere you want to go, in any kind of weather, there's always a train to take you there, swiftly, comfortably, and safely. No matter what has to be shipped, the coal from our mines, the thousands of cattle and sheep from the grazing country, the timber from our forests, the grains for our mills, the finished products from our mills and factories. The dependable, low-cost way to ship them is by the railroads of America. Everyone knows how very important railroads are, but how much do you really know about trains? In order to find out, we're going to have a quiz about them. This is the way the quiz works. First, we will give you some general information about railroads. Then, later on, we will ask questions based on that information. Now, listen closely so you'll be able to give the correct answers. All set? Because of improvements in tracks and equipment, today's trains can travel at high speeds with comfort and safety. Not only passenger trains, but express and freight trains as well. Many trains average more than 60 miles an hour. And traveling at 60 miles an hour means going a mile in 60 seconds. The strip of land on which railroads and railroad facilities are built is known as right-of-way. On these lands and facilities, railroads pay taxes. And these taxes, among many other things, pay for the education of about one million children every year. Incidentally, a railroad right-of-way is not a good or safe playground. In railroad terms, the word gauge means the space in feet and inches between the two parallel rails of a track. In the United States, gauge is standardized at four feet, eight and one half inches. This standardization of gauge means that in America, the cars of any railroad can travel over the tracks of any other railroad. In the early days, railroads used wooden rails capped with thin strips of iron to provide a running surface for the wheels. Later, iron rails were imported from England. Then, in 1865, steel rails were rolled in the United States. And today, more than two million tons of steel rails are normally laid each year by America's railroads. You might also be interested to know that rails are weighed by the yard. If a yard of rail weighs 90 pounds, that means it is 90 pound rail. If it weighs 132 pounds to the yard, it is known as 132-pound rail. The freight train is perhaps one of the most important factors in our everyday existence. It carries most of the foods we eat, the clothes we wear, and the fuel. Have you ever noticed the last car of a freight train? This end car is known as the caboose. The caboose is where the train crew does its work. So much for the facts. Now for the questions, and I hope the correct answers. Ready for the first question? If a train travels 60 miles an hour, how many miles will it travel in 60 seconds? 60 feet? 60 yards? 60 blocks? Or one mile? The correct answer, of course, is one mile. But that was an easy one just for a starter. Now for the next question. In railroad terms, what is meant by right of way? Is it the side of the locomotive the engineer sits on? The strip of land on which the railroad and railroad facilities are built? Or is it the side of the locomotive the fireman sits on? Looks like a lot of you know the answer to that one. Right of way is the strip of land on which the railroad and railroad facilities are built. It is wide enough to provide for tracks and drainage, bridge abutments, signals, telephone and telegraph lines, sidings, 
buildings and other railroad needs. Question number three. How many children are provided with an education from railroad taxes every year? 10,000? 100,000? 1 million? The correct answer, about 1 million. That many children are provided with an education every year by the taxes paid by railroads. And in addition, railroad taxes also help to protect the health of your community, as well as to help build highways, waterways, and airports, or other forms of transport who are actually in competition with railroads. In railroad terms, what is meant by gauge? Is it the correct time? A roll of bandage? Or is it the space in feet and inches between the two parallel rails of a track? Right again. Gauge means the space in feet and inches between the two parallel rails of a track. In the United States, standard gauge is four feet eight and one half inches. More than 99 and three quarters percent of all track in America is standard gauge makes it possible for the cars of any railroad to travel over the rails of any other railroad. Now, watch out for this next question. What kind of material used by railroads is weighed by the yard? Is it drainage pipe? Spaghetti served in the dining cars? Or is it rail for track? The answer is rail for track. In the early days, when engines and cars were very light and trains were slower, rail made of ordinary iron and weighing as little as 25 pounds per yard was strong enough to bear the weight and to withstand the wear of the spinning wheels. With today's faster and heavier equipment, however, we have 90-pound rail, 112-pound rail, and 132 pound rail. Even 155 pound rail, meaning that the weight of the rail is that many pounds to the yard. Now for the last question, and this is a tricky one. What is a caboose? Is it a jail? A baby Indian? A mother moose? or the end car of a freight train? The correct answer is the end car of a freight train. A caboose will be found at the end of every freight train. It is really a traveling office where the train crew does its work. And so we come to the end of another railroad quiz. We hope you've enjoyed it, and just so you won't forget, let's review what we've learned. We've learned that right-of-way means the strip of land on which railroads and railroad facilities are built. We've learned that railroad taxes provide an education for about a million children every year. We've learned that gauge is the distance in feet and inches between the two parallel rails of a track, and that standard gauge in the United States is four feet eight and one-half inches. We've learned that rail is weighed by the yard and that a caboose is not an Indian baby, but the end car of a freight train. The main thing to remember is how very important railroads are in our everyday lives. There never has been nor is there in sight any form of transportation which can take the place of railroads in performing the transportation services upon which the very life of our nation depends. So all aboard and clear the tracks, and the railroads of America will continue to keep them rolling.
When we think of going to another town or state, north, south, east, or west, we think of railroads. Everyone knows the best way to travel is by train, because trains are fast and safe. They are comfortable and cost very little to travel on. Most of all, they are fun. But besides being lots of fun to travel on, railroads have other work to do that is just as important as carrying people. They carry things, what we call freight. That is what makes railroads so very important in our everyday lives. Because railroads are so interesting and important, we are going to have another classroom quiz about them. Now this is the way the quiz works. First, we will give you some general information about the railroads. Then, later on, we will ask you questions based on that information. Does that sound too easy? Well, just wait and see. Now let's go. Years ago, when our Western railroads were being built, a famous Indian scout by the name of Colonel William Cody supplied buffalo meat for the railroad workers. He killed so many buffalo, he became known as Buffalo Bill. And many people never knew he had any other name. In Buffalo Bill's day, trains were only three or four cars long and were pulled by small locomotives. Today, trains and passenger service sometimes have as many as 20 cars, while freight trains are sometimes more than a mile long. Today's trains are pulled by giant locomotives that make those early locomotives look like playthings by comparison. When locomotives are in need of servicing and general repair, they are taken to what is called a roundhouse. Every railroad has its own roundhouses with huge turntables to turn locomotives in any direction. Well, we hope you're paying attention. Remember, in a few minutes, you're going to be asked questions on what we're talking about now. The next time you see a freight train, notice how many different types of freight cars there are. There are tank cars for carrying such things as chemicals and oil. Ordinary box cars are used to carry general merchandise. Gondolas are used for carrying such things as coal and iron ore. There are cars especially built to carry automobiles. Flat cars are used to carry lumber and other things too big to be put inside regular type cars. And there are cattle cars too for carrying livestock. Then there are cars that carry fruits, vegetables, meats, and dairy products. Foods known as perishables, because they spoil unless protected against heat. Perishables are shipped in refrigerator cars. A refrigerator car is very much like our own icebox or refrigerator at home. These cars have special bunkers where ice is stored to keep the air cool inside the car. Some of these cars also have special fans which circulate cold air throughout the load. Every train, whether it is a passenger train or a freight train, must have a crew to operate it. Usually, this crew consists of an engineer, a fireman, a brakeman or flagman, and a conductor. The man who is in charge, whether it is a passenger train or a freight train, is always the train conductor. All right, so much for the facts. Now let's see how much you remember. Try to answer more questions than the person next to you. All set? Now for the first question. Who was Buffalo Bill? Was he a famous railroad engineer? The inventor of the steam locomotive? 
Or was he a famous Indian scout? Let's see. That's right, Buffalo Bill was a famous Indian scout. Years ago, Buffalo Bill, whose real name was Colonel William Cody, supplied buffalo meat for workers on the Western Railroads. He killed so many buffalo that he came to be known as Buffalo Bill. Now for our second question. What is a roundhouse? Is it a place where railroad men live? A place where locomotives are serviced? Or is it a place where model trains are sold? Uh-huh, a roundhouse is a place where locomotives are serviced. It is called a roundhouse because it is round. The turntable in the center is used to turn the locomotives to face any desired direction. Okay, now we're ready for question number three. What are perishables? Are they foods that spoil in the heat? Are they damaged freight cars? Or are they old locomotives? Perishables are foods that spoil in the heat. Such foods as oranges, bananas, vegetables, dairy products, meats and other kinds of foods that we usually keep in our own ice boxes and refrigerators. The next question is, how do the railroads keep perishables from spoiling. By wrapping them in cellophane, by spraying them with water, or by shipping them in refrigerator cars. If you listened closely at the beginning, the answer to this question should be easy. Perishables are kept from spoiling by shipping them in refrigerator cars. These cars are really ice boxes on wheels, capable of keeping perishables fresh for many days. That's why, no matter where you live, you can always have fresh fruits, vegetables, dairy products, and meats. Now watch out for the next question. What is a gondola? Is it a canal boat in Venice, Italy? Is it a type of freight car? Or is it a modern musical instrument? There are two correct answers to this question. Most of us know that the people in Venice, Italy use canal boats which are called gondolas. But in railroad terms, a gondola is a freight car without a top used to carry heavy bulk commodities such as coal, coke, and ores. If you had both answers correct, you're really pretty good. Now for the last question. Which member of the train crew is in charge of the train? Is it the Pullman porter? Is it the engineer? Or is it the conductor? That's right, the conductor is in charge. He is responsible for seeing to it that the train is in order and he gives the final decision on any question. He is the one who signals the engineer to start the train. And on passenger trains, the conductor is the one who collects your train ticket. Well, 
Our quiz game is over. But before we close, let's go over the things we've learned in this quiz. We've learned that Buffalo Bill was a famous Indian scout who supplied meat to the early Western Railroad workers. We've learned that a roundhouse is a place where locomotives are serviced and repaired. We've learned that perishables are foods that spoil in the heat. And that the railroads keep perishables from spoiling by shipping them in refrigerator cars. We've learned that a gondola is a canal boat in Italy. And in railroad terms, gondolas are used to carry heavy bulk commodities, such as coal and ores. And finally, we've learned that the man in charge of a train is the train conductor. If you answered all of the questions right, you're really good. If you didn't, well, we're sure you'll do better with our next quiz picture, in which you'll learn many more interesting things about your railroad. In the meantime, the next time you see a train or take a train trip, watch out for all the things that make trains so important and exciting. So until then, all aboard, until we meet again. <laughs>